champion of science, innovation, and human resilience, Dr. Diana Azam. Each year, over two million Americans hear the words, you have cancer. In that moment, everything blurs. The world gets quiet, except for that one word, cancer. Overall, cancer is the second leading cause of death in adults. But it doesn't stop there. Cancer is the number one cause of disease-related death in children. Think about that for a moment. The number one. These aren't just statistics. These are our children, our families, our friends, our loved ones. The truth is, we all have cancer stories. And yet, despite all the advances we've made in cancer preventions and treatments, one in three cancer patients will still die from the disease. But why? Because in all of that science and progress, something is missing. You. You see, the healthcare system is built around standard of care treatments, what usually works for most of the people most of the time. But cancer doesn't care about averages. Every cancer is unique, every person is unique, and when standard treatments fail, we need better ways. Now imagine something different. Imagine if we can take a sample of your cancer, your actual cancer cells, and test them against hundreds of FDA-approved drugs, not in theory, in real life, to find out what actually works for you, not an average patient, you. That is the power and promise of functional precision medicine. I'm Dr. Diana Azam, cancer researcher at Florida International University. I've spent my career studying the toughest cancers, the ones that don't respond to treatments and the ones that keep coming back. And with everything we know about cancer, one question still keeps me up at night. If every person is different and every person's cancer is different, why are we still treating them the same way? Why are we still relying on one-size-fits-all solutions hoping they'll work. So my mission is simple, to stop guessing and start personalizing treatments for those patients that need it the most, those that run out of options. That's where my work comes in. It's called functional precision medicine. And today, I'm going to show you how functional precision medicine changed Logan's future. Logan was only three years old when he was diagnosed with an aggressive blood cancer called acute myeloid leukemia. He went through four rounds of intense chemotherapy, followed by a bone marrow transplant from his baby sister, who happened to be his perfect match. And it worked. Logan went into remission. His fi family finally breathed. Life went back to normal, but only for a little while. One year later, Logan's cancer came back. And as his mother described that moment, our world suddenly stopped. You see, for children like Logan, when their cancer comes back, it often comes back stronger, more aggressive, and more resistant. So it gets harder to treat. And when standard treatments fail, these are moments that families are told, we're sorry, there's nothing more we can do. Thankfully, Logan's parents didn't have to hear those heartbreaking words because Logan was fortunate to be treated by Dr. Maggie Fader, pediatric oncologist from Nicholas Children's Hospital, who is an early adopter of new technologies and works very closely with cancer researchers like me to provide options for their patients whose cancers have returned. Dr. Maggie Fader quickly enrolled Logan into our functional precision medicine trial. So what is functional precision medicine? Let's break it down a bit. Today, when we talk about precision medicine, 
we're often talking about genomic testing, analyzing a patient's DNA to find mutations and then targeting those mutations with drugs. It's a powerful tool, but it only tells part of the story. Many cancer patients, especially children, don't have mutations that we can target. And even if a mutation is found, that targeted drug doesn't always work. That's where functional precision medicine comes in. Instead of assuming which drugs might work, let's test and find out what actually works using the patient's own living cancer cells. We take a small sample of the patient's tumor, culture those cells outside the body, and expose them to a wide panel of FDA-approved drugs, cancer drugs and non-cancer drugs, and usually hundreds. And we then observe which drugs kill the cancer cells, which don't. It's fast, and it creates a personalized treatment plan tailored to that patient, not to an average. And here's the thing. This idea isn't brand new. 30 years ago, doctors tried a version of it called chemosensitivity testing. But back then, we didn't have enough drugs. We didn't have the right tools to culture cancer cells live in the lab. And we, didn't, and we certainly didn't have the technology that it takes to deliver tiny, precise droplets of drugs quickly and directly on cancer cells. Today, everything has changed. We now have thousands of FDA-approved drugs. We have advanced methods to culture tumor cells in the lab, very similar to how they grow in the body. And we have powerful analytics to read responses to drugs fast enough to change a patient's care plan before time runs out. All of this is done outside the body, sparing the patient toxic side effects and ineffective treatments. Think of it like how we treat bacterial infections. If somebody comes in with a bacterial infection, we don't guess which antibiotic might work. We test the bacteria against different antibiotics, and we treat with the antibiotic that works best. Functional precision medicine applies the same principle to cancer care. And with today's technology, it's finally possible. Not in theory, in real life, in real time, in labs like mine. So back to Logan. Logan was patient 13 in our clinical trial. After my lab received a biopsy of his tumor, we tested how his cancer cells responded to hundreds of drugs. Which drugs worked, which drugs didn't. We didn't have to guess, we saw it. Within a week, we identified three actionable steps. First, we identified a specific targeted drug that worked for his mutation. Second, we removed a toxic chemotherapy medication that wasn't necessary. And third, we eliminated steroids from his regimen because it unexpectedly fueled the growth of his cancer cells. The result, within 33 days, Logan achieved remission after undergoing a second bone marrow transplant. And today, Today, three years later, Logan remains cancer-free. Yes. <laughs> he's back in school and he's playing soccer. And as his mother describes that moment, we got our son back. You see, I have to admit that I was never supposed to know who patient 13 is. Studies like these follow strict rules to protect patients' privacy, especially when we're dealing with something as serious as cancer. But one day, I was presenting my results at the Live Like Bella Research Symposium, the very foundation that funded this work, and a beautiful woman approached me with a smile and said, 
I think my son was part of a study like yours. So we started talking and we immediately connected the dots. Her son was patient 13 and his name is Logan. I share Logan's story because it is a power to the testament of functional precision medicine. But it's not only Logan. The data we've generated so far speaks for itself. In the first clinical trial in which Logan was enrolled in, children whose treatments were guided by functional precision medicine had an 83% better response rate than those treated by doctor's choice. This is not just an improvement. This is life-saving. Our study was published um, in the prestigious Nature Medicine, and we were featured on the cover of the journal. And we continue to see just amazing results both from our clinical trials, both in children and adults. And with artificial intelligence and more data, we'll soon be able to predict what works for each patient without even needing a biopsy. So you're probably asking, why isn't functional precision medicine available to everyone? Why isn't functional precision medicine standard of care? The truth is, we're still catching up. To truly make functional precision medicine the standard of care, we need to keep generating more data, validating it, scaling it. Because the more patients we help, the more we learn. And the stronger the case becomes to make this the standard of care. Imagine a world where standard practice is a patient's tumor gets tested against dozens of dr drugs before deciding upon treatment. No more guessing, no more let's see if this works, just the right treatment for the right patient at the right time. That world is possible, and it's closer than you think. The science is here, the technology is ready, and the momentum is building. That's why I'm here today. Because patients need to deserve to know that this option exists. Doctors need to know how to access it. And policymakers need to understand its potential to save lives. Not someday, but today. So what can you do? If you're a cancer patient, ask your doctor about functional precision medicine. Advocate for it. If you're a physician, consider collaborating with a functional precision medicine researcher. If you're a policymaker, support initiatives that expand access to this technology. And if you want to change the world of cancer care today, support our cause. Be part of a movement that refuses to accept what usually works is good enough. Because when it comes to cancer, usual is not enough. We deserve a better way. Together, let's break down the cancer treatment barriers and let's ensure no child, no family is left without hope. Together, let's make sure there are more Logans out there. Thank you.